Profits at Norway's biggest bank grew in the fourth quarter. Uh, this was powered by rising lending revenues and a jump in investment banking. DMB is on the offensive again after having pared back its exposure to the volatile oil and shipping sectors. I'm very pleased to say we're joined now by Kirsten Brathen, who is the CFO of DMB. She's with me here on set in London. Thank you for visiting us, Kirsten, here in London. Um, let me ask you a little bit about the performance of the business. It seems to have been well received by the market. The stock is trading a little bit higher at this this morning, there'd been fears that maybe volatility in oil markets might weigh on corporate activity in that sector. Uh, it, has that been an area of concern for you? Uh, this has not been an area of concern for us in, in the short term. I think the uh, turmoil that we were through in, uh, in 2016 showed that it, even then at that time it was impacting the market, but it, proven, it is proven that the Norwegian economy is quite resilient now towards downturns in the oil market. And in this quarter that has not been an impact of our results. Mm. Matt? You, meant, uh, you mentioned investment banking fees as a big driver in the fourth quarter. Can you talk to us about specific deals um, or industries where, where those helped? Uh, absolutely. Uh, investment banking has been uh, growing by uh, close to 40 percent compared to the same quarter uh, last year. And this in a quarter where capital markets hasn't been easy in all of the uh, product uh, areas. One strong element for us this quarter is the cooperation with our large corporate uh, banking entity and the underwriting and distribution of, uh, of credits, both to banks and other entities. Another strong area is uh, M&A. No single industries is dominating, and we see this as a result of building a broader specter and a broader geographic footprint in our in investment banking over time. Can I ask you about the cost picture at your bank? Because uh, one of my colleagues was telling me your cost income ratio target of below 40% would be you know, industry beating if you were to be able to achieve that. Do you stick with that? How do you get to that kind of level, Kirsten? We stick with our uh, cost income target of getting our cost base below 40% uh, of our revenue. Uh, the cost picture this year is, if you look at the year as a whole, a flat development compared to the uh, previous year, whereas the fourth quarter is somewhat impacted by, uh, by non-recurring uh, figures. But we have worked and are continuously working on increasing the efficiency in our core banking activity and have been successful doing so uh, in relation to the uh, transition into a more digital uh, banking environment. Because mm, you need to invest and spend a lot to do that. We need to invest and then we need to take out the uh, efficiency uh, effects. We have been doing so. We have now more than 80% of the uh, mortgage applications coming in through the digital channel and we're working to increase the number of end-to-end uh, -end digital uh, mortgage processings. It's one of the few places um, still Nor Norway where we see rates continue to rise. Are you expecting further increases this year? And does that help your net interest margin? Uh, one of the you know, sore spots for many uh, for European bankers? Uh, absolutely. The first rate hike in Norway took place in September uh, last year and obviously the repricing we did is a big element and a contributor to the 5% increase we have in net interest income in, in the fourth quarter. The economy is very strong in Norway, low unemployment and investments up both in the oil related sector and mainland uh, sector and the expectations is for another two rate hikes in uh, 2019 and one more in 2020. And obviously for us as a bank who live off of margins is a positive with a raising interest rate environment and we still believe in growth. And you still believe in growth. I want to ask about shareholder payouts as well. Uh, looking at what you spend on dividends and on share buybacks, um, you've got around three quarters of net earnings going out in that fashion as, as shareholder uh, payouts. Is, given where your capital position is, looking at your CC1 ratio, 16.8% you're talking about today, is there room to increase payouts to investors? 16.8% is towards the end of 19 or at the end of 19 because there's an increase in a counter-cyclical uh, buffer. The current requirement is 15.4 and we're targeting 16.3. Uh, uh, Our dividend policy is very clear. Uh, we pay out more than 50% cash and an increasing nominal uh, dividend and then we optimize with share buybacks. We still have room and believe uh, there will be uh, growth. And then what is important for us, rather than targeting a total amount combining dividend and, and, and payout, is to, is to optimize around our capital situation in order to distribute excess capital to shareholders.